Today is Wednesday, April 15th, 2020. Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And this is our recap of Winners at War Week 10. This episode is titled The Full Circle, and that comes courtesy of Ben. Yeah, early on, too. Very, very early. The first few minutes, we enter into the episode on day 24. It looks like a reward challenge, but there's a surprise. Well, I marked it as Oh Family Visit slash Reward Challenge. Mm -hmm. Then I had to go mark that reward challenge out. Okay. First out of the family visit is Kim's husband, Bud, and their three kids. Aww. And she remarks that it certainly, the family visit came sooner than expected, so it was quite the surprise for everyone. Yeah, yeah, everybody was shocked. Caught them off guard for sure. Which is always extra fun. Now, I'm... I'm never a fan of these because they seemed like forced emotional moments to me, and I resist that kind of thing when someone's trying to make you feel a certain way, especially the way these are, but you seem to really enjoy this and respond to it. I did. Yeah. You didn't? Yeah, it was okay getting to see them. I'm here for Survivor, and I know there are people and that they have families and all that, but again... If you're going to try to make me feel awe or make me feel sad or whatever it is when it's forced like this and it's so telegraphed, it it has just the exact opposite effect on me. You're hardcore. Mm. I enjoyed it. I I did. I enjoyed seeing their families. different ways. Yeah, sure. And I even teared up a little. I can appreciate it for how it impacts them and makes them feel it's okay honey i'll be the sensitive one in our family (laughs) sure all right check after kim (laughs) we get ben his wife kelly comes out and brings their two kids a little boy and a little girl this is when we get the title this is full circle for this to be able to happen because he was denied before and now they get to come out there and, and see what the experience is like he tells us how he strives to be a good man a good father and a good husband Mm mm-hmm which is awesome. Yeah. Sophie's fiance, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Okay. Bobby. <laughs> she tells us he's a trusting guy, though. I'm not sure Sophie should have said, you know. She dissed everyone I, I out like there. I the people, but I don't know <laughs> who I can trust. I'm just like, okay, Sophie, TMI. Yeah. You might want to dial that back at this. She needed a wait I, moment. I know what you're saying, but that didn't come out exactly. No. Not favorable. Certainly, it complimented Bubby, and it Bubby. Un- uncomplimented all the other castaways Bob that is she's Je- playing Jeff with. Jeff just sits stuck with Bob. Sarah's partner, Wyatt, comes out with their son, and Sarah tells us, this is my world right here. This is it, what she lives for. Wyatt and her baby. Uh, Denise's husband, Brad, and her daughter. Towering over Good her. Good <laughs> grief. She's so tiny. Yeah. Emphasize she it even like more somehow. She looks the kid in the family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her daughter takes after daddy. Yes, definitely he got dad's height. height. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah. But you can tell she and Denise are very close. Next up, Nick and his fiancée, Giselle. And Giselle, he tells us, provides clarity for him. Well, too bad she's not on your shoulder in the game. Tony's wife, Marissa, and two kids. And Tony tells us that he's finally able to have the family out here. So there were circumstances that kept him from being there and being at the finale yeah. with him before. And Marissa either being pregnant or having a little mm-hmm. one and mm-hmm. not being able to. Michelle's sister shows up. Yep, and they get to talk about the sister bond. I didn't catch her name, did you? Mm-mm. Yep. No, but she said they room together, and also they're usually together all the time. Yep. 
I'm sure that makes her sister miss her more. Tyson and his wife Rachel, who we seen play when she was in their Blood versus Water season, and their one of their daughters. Yeah, I was hoping they'd tell why the other one didn't come, but maybe she's yeah. When you emphasize the one, young. it leaves the question hanging out there. Yeah, mm, perhaps I know. That's, it's it like, that's why I thought. Uh, uh, one of your daughters is like, <laughs> okay. well, okay, Jeff, but where's the, the other daughter? Yeah. Tyson tells too? it's another full circle story for him. It's his first family visit out of all his times playing. And then at the end, we get Jeremy and Val and the four kids. I loved how I couldn't tell which one of his daughters it was, but I heard her say, you can do it, Daddy, because he was breaking down and yeah. she was pumping him up. <laughs> She's worried about her dad. She's like, you can do it. Oh, uh, d- you could tell the look on the guys' faces were even, uh, they they tend to focus on that a lot because I thought, oh, my gosh, Jeremy and Sometimes Tony. Sometimes they get a little more wrecked and, uh, than the women do. Yeah, Jeremy, <laughs> they just look like, oh, and because they're try- they are they were it. trying to hold it in. Yeah. They're like, oh, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry on <laughs> national TV. I'm going to blubber. You got yeah. some sand in my the women don't care. It's I'm not like, crying. You're yeah, crying. Yeah, I'm crying. I don't care. Yeah. My baby's here. But the men looked like they were trying to be tough. They just couldn't do it. Jeremy tells us that these kids and his wife are the reason why he almost didn't play and then the reason that he did. So there you are. Jeff gets a plug-in for Fiji Airways that made all this possible by flying all these families out. You think Tony wanted to target Jeremy because he's got more kids than me. They might be more sympathetic to somebody with four kids, and he's a fireman. <laughs> he's a hero outside the game, too, like me, uh-huh. you know. Yeah, so, man, he's my competition. He got more kids than me to support. Hmm. I better vote him out. It's an interesting session of projection <laughs> via Joanne. I, it just ran through my mind. Uh-huh. All right, and then Probes teases us a little bit with a loved one's challenge, and then, eh, just kidding, go have a feast and... Meet everyone and have a good time. With what your was really awesome was that they were able to get Fiji Airlines to fly them all out. Yeah, it's almost like I didn't say that like a minute ago. Oh, I didn't hear you. <laughs> Obviously, I tuned you out because you were rattling on. Or I see that. You must know be that, that happens. It was. It's my know. fault. Uh-huh. But I didn't hear you say it. You didn't give them credit. <laughs> Well, I told you I had a little brain fog going, so okay. what can I say? Yep. Okay, back to Koru. Koru? Koru? Koru. Koru. Yep, this is a two-day cycle, day 24 and 25, so they're back at camp. Ben tells us this is just the best. There's no competition. It's just a full-on celebration. And Sarah says, we put our guns down. Tyson's happy for everyone. Yeah, Ben time. said this was the biggest blindside in the game so far. Mm-hmm. Because we were not expecting this to happen this soon. So I like that they didn't give them a clue. You know, usually they give them a little something. They go, oh, it's the family visit. Mm -hmm. But they had no clue this time. And, of course, the big question was, are they going to do the family visit for those on the edge of extinction? Surely not. I said they were. (laughs) You said, no, I don't want to see that. I said, I bet they do. Here's, here's a boat coming in. What could it be? Ethan tells us it's something bad. Oh, it's something bad. Oh, he and Rob. Oh, it's something bad. It's always something bad. There's never anything good. I thought, oh, my gosh. And then Ethan was luckily, full on fretting. <laughs> Natalie steps through, and as soon as she spotted 20 right yep. there with the baby right in front, ready to get off that thing, mm-hmm. she was like, it's our family. Mm-hmm. Amber's so happy. She's not even hungry anymore, she tells us. Well, I thought that. I wouldn't get in Amber's way. (laughs) She'll mow somebody over. Danny couldn't even get there, but she (laughs) She collapsed into crying face, and the hugs proceeded. I thought Amber got two girls, and Rob got two of the girls, and they had their hands full. Adam tells us that having his dad there offers some closure for him. Wendell's thrilled with his dad there. Yule's got the sheer joy and happiness overwhelming him. So only one of his, he's got two as well, I think. So Uh uh, only one of his daughters were able to come. Ethan tells his wife he doesn't ever want to be away from her again, at which point she promptly leaves. (laughs) 
<laughs> You're terrible. <laughs> you know, touchy, good and well, touching. when you came back from being out in the desert for uh, two weeks and went through all of that survival thing, yep. that you were extremely emotional. I was, absolutely. So you you can't say you weren't. I, I'm not pretending that I'm oh, not okay. emotional. <laughs> I'm saying when it's forced on you like this I to am. answer your question, that it doesn't really do anything for me. I can appreciate the significance of it for them. That's all. And I knew that that was setting them up for a funny moment because he was sharing something sincere and heartfelt with her about not wanting to be away from her. And he meant in the bigger sense, once yeah. this is done, but he never wants to sure, leave her again. Sure enough, she's got to get back on the boat and go <laughs> not too long after having said that. Well, my first thought was, is he going to just leave and fly back with Yeah, her? that was an interesting idea that you pitched out there when we were talking about it's this like and he what, he, could, what he, he said. He could just go, nah. Yeah. I am not doing this. I I want to be with this woman. I'm out of here. Yeah. But, but he, no, didn't. he didn't. He stayed that. st good. stuck with it. Well, I really liked that it took all the pain and suffering they were going through for that, however long their kids and their families got to be there. Uh, they forgot all that stuff and yeah. just were able to experience the joy. Yep, absolutely. That had been tough to see them leave, though. Oy. All right, anything else you want to say about the family I visit? I want to know who escorted Rob and Amber's kids. I didn't see anybody. Uh, there was one of the mothers, I think, was there with them. I'm not 100% sure. It was I didn't see him. hard to tell because uh, I think Danny's mom was there. It looked like Danny's mom was there for sure, but... I didn't see who brought Robin Amber's kids. Okay. Well, well, I'm sure we'll figure it out. There's probably I a whole know, and you extra don't care. video dedicated to that that we can look okay. forward to. Okay. <laughs> Day 25. We're done with the family visit. We're moving on. It's time for the community challenge. It's classic. You got your wobbly table that you got to stack letters on to spell the word immunity, and it's attached to a rope. You have However, to go ever back and forth and back and forth. You get. Two tokens this time. Two fire tokens to the winner. Yep. Propes tells us that Michelle and Sarah had both done this one before. They had experience with it. But it's Tyson, Tony, Didn't and... seem to help them any. Tyson, Tony, and Nick out in the lead. Jeremy makes some quick progress, but Propes says it's dangerous how quick and loose he's playing it. And sure enough, he drops his stack about four letters in and has to start over. And now Kim and Tony are tied with four... Kim drops her stack and starts over. <laughs> and uh, both Kim and Jeremy drop. Tony is in the lead. And Tony, then Tyson, Nick, and Ben. Tyson and Nick, yep. And then Tyson, Tyson, Tyson and Nick drops. drops. Yep. Nick drops. Tony versus Ben. And then Ben drops. And Tony wins. Yeah. All right. Good job, Tony. I was very relieved because I put Tony safe for this week. <laughs> so I'm so like. You really wanted him to win, huh? Yes. Yeah. I get a safe point. It was pretty special for Tony. That's his first ever immunity win, Probe said. Yeah, well, Tony said, too. First time in three seasons. I thought, uh, he's, he's like, slow and steady is just not me. I'm usually fast and sloppy. I thought, okay, that was just kind of weird. <laughs> ben sets us up. Going into the commercial and his quick confessional after the immunity challenge, he says, tonight with 10 left, they're going to settle who's really in control, and tonight there will be blood. And that was a mistake on Jeremy's part, because Tony's like, no, we can't do that, man. Though, to his credit, he did tell Jeremy that, but... What are you referring to? When Tony told Jeremy, no, we can't do that, to vote Sarah or Sophie. I Okay, we hadn't said anything about that yet. You kind of jumped in the middle there. Oh, <laughs> I thought you did. <laughs> well, you're, you're just marching the beat I of your own you, drum. I told you before we started mm -hmm. that I was having fog brain. Tony okay. tells us that when you have the power, people come to you, and sure, uh, sure enough, Jeremy does, and that's when Jeremy pitches that idea of breaking up Sarah and Sophie. Jeremy tells us it's frustrating to have no voice. Cut to Sarah and Tony discussing it, and they've got two different ideas for what Sarah they want to do. Sarah is so adamant about Kim, and and Kim has everybody in her back pocket. Tony doesn't agree. He doesn't 
think she's got everybody in her back pocket at all. And then when he doesn't agree with her and jump right on board, she declares that talking to Tony's like talking to a rock. Yep, but then she <laughs> keeps talking till she convinces him and then tells him to go talk to the boys about it. Uh-huh. But instead, Tony goes to Ben and Nick and says, Hey, how about us three and Sarah and Sophie? We could vote out Jeremy. Jeremy's threat. He's so a blind side he Jeremy. He's got another plan to get his way, basically. Yeah, he didn't say nothing about Kim that we heard. Right. He just uh, chose somebody else and then basically went back and told her, Hey, Jeremy wants you out. And as soon as I heard that, that that that's all I need to hear. We got to get Jeremy. What did you think about that conversation between Jeremy and Kim and then they pulled Tyson in? Basically, yeah, we're declaring said, we the have, no friends alliance. Yeah, we have no friends in this game. We need to stick together. Even though Kim and Tyson, um, they were in that original card game. Well, they weren't supposed really. Supposed card game alliance. You will put that tag on them and it yeah, stuck. No. It didn't seem like they were necessarily going down that yeah, path. Yeah, it didn't seem like they but were. But then they had they no choice friends. but to head in that direction well and they feel confident that they could pull in michelle and denise mm -hmm. but both of these groups are only pulling in five yep why it's i kept thinking well why aren't you going like survivor after survivor math again yep well but probably sarah had said you know she could steal a vote so she wasn't too worried about well and if kim, the five voted together she could handle the rest kim was talking about uh being able to play an idol too so they were hoping for herself that, or somebody. Yeah, that's where we had gotten from the previous next time on Survivor. She said she was willing to willing to play risky and play risk going to the edge to pull this off and gain control. In which Denise said, "Yeah, but you have an idol." She said, "I'll play it for somebody else." And Denise did that. So see Ben talking to Sarah and discussing the potential blind side of Jeremy. And that's when you get Tony talking to Sarah after that in the sequence where he shares with her that Jeremy said he was coming for you. And now Sarah appears to be on board just like that. Yep, that's Bob's usually all it takes, done. and Tony knew that. And he did actually say that, so. We see Sarah and Sophie discussing, and Sarah says, well, I got that steal a vote, so I can basically pull this in our favor, no problem. And then we get a quick confessional from Sophie before we go to tribal council. She declares that it will be war tonight, and when the smoke clears, we want to find out who will be dead in the trenches. She wasn't offering any hints. Nope. Tribal council, night 25. Nick tells us in response to Probe's question, yeah, last time was pathetic war, but it feels like we've really playing Survivor now. So someone decided yeah. to include Nick. People are ready to play now, he yeah. said. Now that he's included and not left he out. He was frustrated, but now <laughs> they're willing to play. Yeah. And then the whispers start right away. Boom, right on it. Yeah. Why so fast? I don't get It's the uncertainty, and, and this has been an underlying theme and, and an activity, a, a challenge all throughout the season, is that they can't lock in the amount of trust required for the vote, and they feel the need to to do some extra work when they get there because I don't think it was anything that Nick said. And it certainly wasn't anything that Jeremy started to say that caused it. It just, what you have to remember is there's a time where they get to, they're back at camp, they get to have all these discussions and then they basically lock them down. They say, go get your torch, get your bags, get whatever you want to bring, no more discussion. And then they get on the boat and they get transported over to where tribal council is. And no, then everybody's thinking, no discussion. Little brains are just a tick, 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 ticking. Right. And now you're, they're walking in. No discussion. You can't talk again until you get settled there at tribal council. And exactly what you said. All these thoughts have been racing through people's heads. Right. And as soon as the the probes conversation, the questions start. Well, they've got their cover. They can go. Well, and even Jeff said, "What what triggered that insanity?" And uh, Jeremy commented that, you know, our season is on steroids here. Yep. In which, mm, yes and no. It's not like we haven't seen lots of live tribal councils at this point. True, but so. uh, that that was that was one of the most fast and furious, I would say. It's very active. What did you think about the first attempt to have them vote and what that, played out between Jeremy and Sarah? 
I wasn't quite sure, but I liked that Sarah was trying to make him go first. Well, and he was trying to make her go and first. He was trying ladies, to make her go first. Ladies first. Ladies first. And yeah. she refused, even to the point of Jeff's like, they well, vote. okay, then we'll vote. Yep. They're like, okay, we'll vote. Wait, Jeff. Jeff, no problem. <laughs> and then Jeremy's like, nope, Jeff. It's, uh, this ain't right. So. Th- this ain't right. Sarah stops, and then she's like, no, no, we'll vote. And then Jeremy's like, no, no. Seems like Jeremy was going. I, he Wouldn't would you? have gone. I believe he would have gone. Yeah. Yes. Given the amount of extra discussion that took place after Absolutely. he played his advantage without yes. power, the safety without power advantage and checked out, there was a reset that went on. Yeah. 100% think it was going to be Jeremy and that uh, had he not played it, he would be at exile. That would have been his or, yeah, edge of extinction. Edge, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. So Sophie, it all starts again. The whispering. Sophie says, "How about the five of us?" Well, Sophie that, made it real the, clear where the line was drawn. Yes, and it especially before. Especially now that it's five versus four, Jeremy yes. saved himself and checked out. But there's no stalemate there. Well, anymore. they knew they had the votes because they had five of them. Being offered that question, what happens now? So Sophie says, "Let's get over here and make a decision." And then you see Wendell commenting from the jury. He says he left his squad. He abandoned them in reference to Jeremy. But who wouldn't to save themselves? Otherwise, he would have gone. His instincts were good. Well, here's the thing, though. I'm sure that Kim would have played her idol for him. Seems likely. If they knew, Mm -hmm. for sure. But I, I don't think he was willing to take that chance. I can't blame him for that, though they might. Possibly. We'll have to wait and see. Though she she proved that she would play it for somebody else. So. Okay, time to vote. Chair says, nope, she's going to play the steal a vote, <laughs> and she's going to take Denise's vote, and now Denise will not vote. Yeah, at that point I thought, why, why are they using... They had 5-4, right? Yeah, so why are they using the steal a vote? Was my first thought to give them to give them the advantage they needed, so they could offer one alternative to split it. You mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I still don't know if I'd have wanted to use my steal a vote, so that could happen. But it worked out. Yeah. If they'd have put it all on Denise, they'd have been in trouble. Jeff goes to read the votes, and Kim plays her idol. We've been we cleared two advantages and an idol from the game this week. I one hundred percent at this point was certain she was gonna play it for herself. Yeah. But I liked her turning around, looking at them, evaluating. They were not making eye contact and they were actually all looking down in different directions. Yeah. So and there was some coaching while they were huddled up before they went to vote. Do you think it was said, the, don't say anything. The fact No tells. Yeah. The fact that they took Denise's vote, do you think that's what sure. made them made her choose her? Sure. Yeah. They didn't have a lot to go on, so well, you need to leave my girl alone. <laughs> okay, Jeff goes to read the votes. Two votes for Denise. Do not count. We get two votes for Sophie, and then we get four votes for Tyson. Tyson has been voted out his second time this season. He is headed back to the edge of extinction. Yep. Kim says, darn, I almost did that. So she was going back and forth. Do I play it for Denise? Do I play it for Tyson? Denise, Tyson, Denise, Tyson. I took it as a positive sign that Denise got the benefit of her generosity and not Tyson. Why did Michelle's name never come up? And I mean, same re- like who did we pick? We both picked Nick, Nick along with like he, 176 other he, people. He didn't even come up. And Nick and Michelle right now aren't factors. They're they're not. They're the lower tier, the lower lights. The lights not shining on them right now. So that I think that's the general answer to we that question. We never know how that's going to flip around. Yeah. <laughs> Well, when, and I thought when they were really together. Wendell but and, you know, Wendell went out and Adam's gone. Yule's gone. There's no connection. She she just doesn't have a lot going on from that perspective. Are you surprised that her and Nick ended up on separate sides? No, not necessarily. Week? Yeah. Yeah. Which means absolutely nothing for next week. Yeah. Tyson tells him on the way out, I'll see you guys soon. 
Tyson, he unfortunately, flip. has zero fire tokens as he was voted out his second time. So Hadn't he had opportunity flipped the to boxes win off as he walked by. <laughs> yeah, and headed back out to the edge of extinction. To all of y'all, and I got nothing for you, as Jeff would say. So the first half of the episode is pretty much the family visit, so there's not a lot going on there. And even on the active players are saying, you know, we, we turned the game off to have this moment. And yeah. All that. So there's really... And all that great food. Really not a lot of to comment on in terms of the recap, other than you do see these lines drawn, like Sophie had highlighted, like Ben had suggested when we come in. So it would appear that Denise and Michelle and Kim and Jeremy are in a tough spot right now. Yeah, unless somebody gets mad at somebody else and then mm-hmm. start flip-flopping again. So Sophie still has her idol, and Michelle still has her 50-50 advantage. Other than that, we have cleared the board. Mm -hmm. Tony's got two fire tokens, so he joins Denise and Nick with three fire tokens total. Well, yeah, I'm not counting because they're different, and they they get to be spent differently. Okay. Yeah, so there's active players, and there's those on the edge. Well, and you know... Tyson could come back. Certainly possible. He's done it once. Yeah. Could very likely do it again. Absolutely. Overall, we had some interesting gameplay. Does seem like they're figuring things out in the spur of the moment, and that safety advantage did appear to be effective and throw them for loop. So I suspect we'll get to see that again. And as you suggested, there's some potential fallout for Jeremy to manage. After yeah, for sure. pulling that cord, we see it, we saw him give Tyson a heads up that he had that. And Tyson's immediate response was, "But you can't do that. We need your vote. Can't really blame Jeremy for saving himself when he no. had the means to do mm-hmm. so, though. That who, no, who would want to take a chance? No, but throw everybody else under in his alliance under the they bus. They had to fend for themselves or have someone like Kim defend for mm-hmm. him the way she stepped in for Denise. Yeah, I think he thought it was just too risky, and especially, I think it freaked him and spooked him just that little bit that uh, uh, Sarah... He he was observing a lot while all the whispers were going down, but he didn't seem to be involved as much, so that would have made me uneasy, too. Yeah, I think he knew they were targeting him. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting to certainly see the, the second half and how that played out and what the significance of it was, and... We got, at least for now, there's some fairly clear lines with this five versus four. Well, and next on Survivor, Jeremy tells us everybody's been lying to everybody. (laughs) Okay. Okay. That's That's pretty much Survivor. Pretty much Survivor. Sure. Yep, yep. Kim and Denise talk about Tony as being a double agent. Translation? No trust. No trust in Tony. Tony tells us, I want to do damage, man. Mm -hmm. And he's carrying this red bag and he's running. Now, I think that it's one of those, you got to run into the jungle and collect, you know, climb up a ladder and tie, get the bag, untie the the thing and get the bag down to come back and finish the challenge. And, you know, they've done that Mm -hmm. before. And hmm. uh, I kind of thought he was in a challenge because I haven't seen anything look like that red I guess bag. If we had just seen him run by, I would have agreed with you. But instead, he comes running up towards the camera person and then slides down into the sand. And to me, I thought well, maybe he my just fell. First reaction was, "What's in the bag? Did he get an offer from the edge?" Because Tyson's hmm. taking that information back that he just won two fire tokens. With the necklace, they're going to know now that they're winning yeah, fire tokens three. for yeah, yeah. for the yeah. And so there you go. There's there's a way to maximize return on something you want to sell from the edge. So I thought I don't remember that being his bag for his personal effects, but perhaps that's what that is. Well, you were seeing it as something else, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just you know that's what came into my mind. That's what came into yeah. yours, and yep. we won't know till next week. Okay. Sarah is telling, who was she talking to when she said, no matter what Tony says, this is what we're doing. Period. Yeah. Who all was she talking to? Did you know? Uh, Sophie, maybe. I, th- I think there were multiple people there. She's basically there. complaining again that she 
she can't no get Tony to do says, what she wants. Tony's all over the place, but we're going to do this. And we see Tony talking to Jeremy, and he tells him they're trying to blindside you, kid. And Jeremy says, who? And Tony they says... They were going to blindside you, kid. Everybody. Yeah. Then Tony says, I'm going to be golden if I pull this off. Again, so, a deal. Yeah. Perhaps a deal. And it might, working, so. it might be the case where he's... The requested price was Ford Fire Tokens, and he's only got three, and so he's trying to, to get the fourth. It could even be something like know. that. Now that Parvati opened it up to the Ford Fire Token deal to Michelle, blowing the economy wide open, anything could happen, crazy. And you know what I said at this point? Tony's out next. Yeah, that's it. That was your <laughs> vote, right? For right now, yeah. Yeah. Yep, what did you right think there. about that quick moment at the end? They they never Aww. showed the jury leaving. I loved it. Are they all. Thanked, I know you probably thanks probes. But... Yeah, sure. I could appreciate Aww, it. That was sweet. You could tell they had coordinated to do that, and everybody ran over and gave probes a hug and thanked him for allowing them to get time with their family members yeah. out on edge of extinction, which well, that, was an unusual thing. That was a thing. gift. It was a gift sure. to them. And I it's supposed I, to be hard I would out certainly there. appreciate it. And I think it's great that they expressed it once tribal council was over. Yeah. Anything else you want to say about next time on Survivor? Uh, no. How about who's, a JSFL who's your, update? Who's your vote out? I'm leaning with uh, Tony, just like you right now. They've manipulated our minds, <laughs> just like for Nick for this week. Because well, we didn't talk about that. We you, both made our picks and didn't talk about it. You can't run afoul of Sarah very long without her straightening things out. I would think so. so. Okay, JSFL update. We had 33 people who lost their USB. Dakota 1107 is in first place with 48 points. All right, congrats. congrats. There were 246 people who lost a safe Did point. Did you double check that? No, I didn't double check it, but that's what it said. <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, 55 people got a vote off point. Congrats. Yeah. In uh, the side challenge, uh, with 47 points, Jay Kindred still in first. With 44, Jeremiah. 41, Jonathan. With 40, we have Drew, Parker, and Stacy. With 39, Cameron, Carl, Cold Mike, Justin, Rebecca, and Slappy. Well, that was a brief stay up there, Slappy. Looks like you slid again. Oh, shut up. <laughs> With 38 points, we have Brandon. 37 is Jack. And with 36, we have Chris. All right, Chris, you keep fighting a good fight there, young man. I understand those three-point weeks. I actually got a four-point week this week, so mm -hmm. I was thrilled. Come on, Chris, you can do it. <laughs> All right. Well, we're excited and looking forward to hearing what you thought about this episode. How did that family visit hit you? I'm sure there's a lot more in Joanne's camp than there is in my camp. I didn't sob or anything, but I did tear up. Yeah? But then, you know, you'd have just made fun of me if I'd been over there sobbing. I wouldn't sobbing. make fun of you. You would have, too. No, not at all. You would have. Nope. It don't work that way. <laughs> you lie. Okay. So, yes, we are indeed looking forward to hearing what the other super fans thought about this and uh, how, how the family visit impacted you, what you thought about that immunity challenge, about Tony winning, and about everything that went down at Tribal. Now we've got a majority alliance. Do you think that's going to hold up? How's it going to play out from here? Is anybody going to find that other idol that's hidden at Sele? Assuming it is there. Is there? there? Well... We thought there would be. Since there this, should be now, this for sure. The Sele idol got played. Now, there is still an idol in play, but at some point, it might trigger them to look again with Kim playing hers, for sure. So, yeah. we, we could see some new developments on that front. And yeah, but Sophie found hers uh, out on the green drive. Yep. So, maybe... Denise had the Sele idol. They are back at the old Sele camp, the original Sele camp. So we we were thinking of a mind that there perhaps was a new idol hidden there after the merge, but we haven't seen any developments in that area yet. So it'll be exciting to see if that perhaps changes things next week. And we're curious to see what 
to see what you think about how things are developing this season. How's it trending out? Is it exciting, enjoyable? I've had some folks commenting about how it seems like it's in a lull for them. I can't say I shared that sentiment other than the merge episode, which was a little bit of a... felt like they were pumping the brakes a little bit for that one, but there's definitely a lot of development this week, and I thought last week was pretty good too. So looking forward to hearing what you thought. The voicemail number... 206-350-1547. There's a toll-free option, 844-643-8737. There's email. You can write it up and send it in, and either Joanne or I will read it into the listener feedback show for you. That's Joanne and Stacy show at gmail.com. And you always have an option of recording your own audio. That's generally how you can ensure you get the best overall quality. Voicemail super quick and convenient doesn't always have the best audio quality but when you're recording your own just remember not to handle it too much if you're recording on your phone or however you're recording and uh, we've had some people get a lot of microphone noise or have the microphone pointed away from them those kind of things so just sort of set it up near you and talk and don't you don't want to be moving around with it a whole bunch to get the best possible result but in the end, we're just happy to, get to hear from you and be able to include that in the show. Whether you're writing it up, recording it, or calling it in, we're looking for three minutes max in that neighborhood there. I'm going to edit it and take out pauses. So if you need to pause and collect your thoughts, that's all good. Feel free to do so. That's automatically whoop, cut right out of there. So, yep, that's you know, an easy cut. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that at all. It happens quick. And uh, we'll tune it up and make you sound as good as we can for the listener feedback show. Feedback's due noon Pacific time on Saturday. Fantastic listener feedback shows again this season. And we're looking forward to hearing from you. Anything else? Have a good night, everyone.